sparked something and um, that these leaders, Edward Zuma being the president's son and King Goodwill Zwelatini being the, the Zulu king, should have thought more carefully about what they said and should take the responsibility. As we speak, King Goodwill Zwelatini is holding what we call an imbizo or a meeting in KwaZulu-Natal. Um, he's expecting 10,000 people to arrive. And the idea is for everybody to get together and talk about how this can be stopped how the xenophobic violence can be put to an end. So he seems to, to be trying to make some type of difference, but whether it's too little too late is yet to be seen. Um, in, in Nigeria and in other, um, in places like Nigeria and Ghana, um, celebrities and people have been calling out for sanctions against South African companies in these countries due to this xenophobic violence. Um, how do South Africa plan on, you know, coming other places, other countries who are worked up by the incidents that happen in South Africa? How do they plan on, you know, mending the relationships that this xenophobic violence is causing? Mm. Um, I struggled to hear what you were saying there, but if I understand correctly, you're asking me about South Africans' reactions to um, threats of sanctions that are being called yes, of South African by companies in places like Nigeria and Ghana. At this point, um, government hasn't made any statement about sanctions that are being threatened. As far as we understand, these sanctions are not being threatened by diplomatic channels, but by celebrities. So it's not really something that government can deal with directly. Um, but we do know that presidents of our neighboring African countries have been putting pressure on South Africa to deal decisively with the xenophobia violence, and it's, it's certainly something the government takes very seriously, I'm sure. But there's a big criticism towards government at the moment, many people saying that um, only once pressure was being put on government by other African countries did they act, they should have acted sooner. But like I said, um, the celebrities in Africa who are understandably calling for serious action in South Africa, well, we haven't really had time to address those yet. As I mentioned earlier, really the big focus now is getting the violence under control. And then, um, <clears throat> in Nigeria, in Nigeria, when a, the king of of Lagos made a statement that was seen as inflammatory, people demanded that he apologize. Are we expecting anytime soon for um, goodwill for the king of the Zulu goodwill to apologize for such statements that might have triggered off the death of innocent people in South Africa. Well, we're keeping an eye on that. Remember, like I mentioned to you, the Mbizo is happening as we speak in Durban, um, and there's a massive gathering of people. So when the king does his address, we'll be able to see what he says. So far, we know that um, he, has, he has intimated through other people that his statements were taken out of context, and that's not what he meant. But we're certainly interested to see if he addresses the claims directly. Um, the envoy, the envoy of Nigeria to South Africa, claims that Nigerians lost Nigerians lost 1.2 million rand, 1.2 million rand in shops that were burned and cars that were stolen and cut shops that were looted. Um, will the South African government be able to compensate people from different um, foreigners from different backgrounds whose shops? and whose livelihood we are taking away from them. Like, based on what I've said about Nigerians losing 1.2 million rand, that's a lot of money. So, how will the government be able to compensate all these people financially? That's an excellent question. And like I mentioned earlier, when you, you asked about compensation, at this point, we just don't know. We know that there's been no official word about compensation. And um, government at this point are focused on trying to, to quell the violence and there's been no statements about what's going to, to happen to support those shop owners who, who lost their livelihood. I mean, the, the footage was absolutely shocking that we saw with shop owners being driven out of their stores, their stores being looted. And we certainly hope that there will be assistance from the South African government. But we're waiting to hear from government to see if that will be the case. Okay. Um, presently, the... The violence in the xenophobic violence has it stopped, or are there still places where the violence is ongoing as we speak? 
That is also a very good question. And devastatingly, um, yesterday in the Sunday newspapers, many South Africans will be aware now that horrible photographs were shown of a Mozambican national, and his name's Emmanuel Sitole. He was stabbed to death in front of a mob and um, in front of a journalist who eventually rushed him to hospital. So we know that as soon as this week end, the violence had, was flaring up. It was very serious over the weekend. And while we haven't got reports this morning of violence, we certainly know that those tensions are really simmering in Durban and in some parts of Johannesburg. And uh, we hope that police will be able to get it under control soon. Okay. Um, but what are, do you know what the South African government is doing to prevent the spread to other towns? Because South Africa is a big place and there are other towns, there are other things like Cape Town, for example. I know the violence is not in Cape Town, but what are the South African government doing to, to prevent it from spreading to places like Cape Town or other parts of South Africa so that they can contain it within Johannesburg and Germany? Well, government have denounced the um, f- the violence in the strongest terms, and government has also said that um, in no way should South Africans be engaging in this type of behavior. They've made arrests. We know that three of the people who were um, involved in the murder and the killing of Emmanuel Sitola have been arrested. Government are offering up to 100,000 rand in a reward. For anybody who gives information on xenophobic violence and killings. So government really are speaking out about xenophobic violence in in the strongest terms. And um, in Parliament and in all levels of government, um, there's been a call for an end to the violence. Okay. One one last question before I let you go. Um, Justice. All the, the people who have been arrested... Will they be meted out the right thing or will they eventually be let go? Because there are so many people, 375 or something like that. So will they be able to meet out justice to all these people for the crimes that they have committed against their fellow Africans? Again, a very good question, um, keeping in mind that the South African justice system is overloaded and um, that there is a heavy caseload. But remember also, the South African justice system is, is a separate entity. It, it runs independently of, of any other organization or any other system. And um, we, we would hope that these people would be tried and given a fair trial. And um, they will have to go through the justice system at this point. We certainly hope that um, the process will be followed through, but I'm unable to give you a confirmation on on whether they will all go through the justice system. It's encouraging, though, to note that arrests have been made. Police are making multiple arrests every day, and um, these people will then face the justice system. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you so much for speaking to us.